Hey folks, Mitch here with IndieSoft. It's Tuesday, so we're going to be doing another tip again this week. Um, this week, I want to show you guys a concept that we call test point groups. What test point groups um, is, is it's a feature that we've put in the database or the system that allows you to select which set of test points you want to actually use or measure against when performing a particular event. Um, it actually does a secondary feature for you, which is you may have a couple of different events set up where you want to pull in a particular set of test points based off what event you're running. So I'm going to show you two examples that will actually um, give you an idea of how this feature set will work. The first one I want to show you is I'm, I'm going to go to a piece of equipment I've previously got set up, which is just a torque wrench. And this is kind of like a scenario that came up in a demo with me last week. That uh, So that's what sparked me to want to do this video for everyone. So the, what you're going to see here is when we look at our test point grid, is you're going to see we have a couple of two different groups of test points. I've got my clockwise group, and then I've got my counterclockwise group. So it, by, by having those set up, what we can create is a scenario where when you launch your calibration event, the software will give you a pop-up box that actually asks you which set of test points you want. So let me go ahead and illustrate that concept. When I go to my events menu, you're going to see my calibration event inside of here once I launch that we're going to get a pop-up box that says which test point group do we want to actually utilize so in my case if I choose the counterclockwise measurements um, I could just hit OK I want to point out this checkbox here where it says include blank groups that would actually include any test points that did not have a group if you did check that box so inside of here I'm choosing just my counterclockwise measurement points only when I hit OK now we're in our standard calibration event. We've got our who, what, when, where step. We've also got our procedures, our charges, repair parts, um, of course your standards and masters if you're using that. But when we get to our calibration or test point window, you're going to notice only the counter measurement points or the counterclockwise measurement points defaulted in. The reason for that is we created that option or the, where you're, you're going to choose which set of test points you actually want to measure against. Now inside of here behind the scenes you're going to see that all those test points exist for this particular item but we chose we only want the counterclockwise points so that's what defaulted in. So you can have a scenario where your user can actually select what test points they want to calibrate or measure against when performing an event. So I'm going to cancel out of this and I want to go show you the second option of what you can do with test point groups and then we'll talk about how you actually set it up and configure it. So the next uh, item I want to look at is, an, is another multimeter I previously had set up. And let's uh, just kind of expose this group column here a little bit. So inside of here, let's say we have a piece of equipment. And again, same scenario. I've got two different types of test points. I've got my DC volt measurements. And if you look down here, I've got my AC volt. And I've got quite a few test points inside of here. But let's say that we had two distinct different events, and maybe an event, and, and I've got this set up already, but let's say I want to run an event called my AC volts inspection. Well, when I run my AC volts inspection, of course I only want my AC volt test points to actually be visible. And the same if I do my DC volts inspection. Again, I only want my DC volts to be visible. So if I actually execute and launch my AC volts inspection event, what we're going to see is there is no pop-up. In the example with the torque wrench, we got a pop-up that said you want our counter or our counterclockwise measurement points. But in this case, um, we only want the, the AC volts. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is just proceed through my event. And as I do that, what you're going to see is when we get to the calibration result window, the only measurement points or test points that are there are the actual AC volts. Okay. So the same would be applicable if I actually launched my previously set up event called DC volts inspection. When I launch this particular event, um, what we're going to see now is same stuff as set up as before. When I get to my calibration results window, all we're going to see is our DC volts. So there's two things you can do with your test point groups. One is you can create an option for your user will select which group of test points they want, right? That's the example that I did with my torque wrench where it gave me the pop-up that said, do I want my counter or my clockwise measurement points? Or you can create an event and specifically say, this group of test points applies to a particular event type. That's what I did with the AC and the DC volts inspection events, okay? 
So here's how we set that up, actually. Um, it's going to involve two things to set that up. The first thing is we have to make visible the group column in your test point grid. So to do that, anywhere in your test point grid, just right click and you're going to see an option called Customize Grid Fields. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. When I do that, um, I've already got this particular column exposed. However, you would actually just have to drag and drop that in. So if I were to remove that, now to enable that, you just go inside of here, find the particular group column, and then we would just drag that over and place that to be visible in the test point grid. And I moved that on the wrong side there. but So now there's my, my test point group that's now visible. Just keep in mind if you ever do modify a test point grid or the column structure there, you will need to actually uh, save that. Otherwise, next time you come back, that will be gone again. Okay. So now, the first thing we do is we make the, the group column visible. We enable that. The second setup we're going to do is we're actually going to go and open up workflow configuration. Okay. So I've actually uh, had that running down on my system tray already. So I'll just bring that back open again. But inside of workflow config, in the event tabs uh, configuration step, you're going to see down at the bottom, you're going to see where we can indicate uh, which test point group we want to be visible or to be utilized based on a particular event. So in my event called DC volts inspection, I've actually set it up where my test point group called voltage measure uh, DC volts actually defaults in. Okay. So inside of here, if I go back and I take a look at this particular item, there's my piece of equipment, there's my test point group, voltage measure, comma DC volts. That's exactly what's going to default and pull in. If I go and I look at my AC volts inspection event, and I'll just go ahead and say no, I don't want to change anything. In my AC volts event, you can see here now I'm on my AC volts, uh, same step, step three. My test point group that I'm declaring that I want to pull in is voltage measure, comma AC volts, which actually is a direct match of what is specified here. Okay. So essentially what you want to do is you want to set up your test point group to match the group that you set up over on the equipment view if you want to actually just have an event pull in a specific set of test points. Now let's say it's the example of the torque wrench where you just want your user to be able to select and specify which test points they want to be visible. In that case, um, I'll just pull up my actual calibration event. And now, so now I'm looking at my calibration event, and you'll see the command or the option that we space we place here is just called user select. So all caps, we're going to put in the command user select, and what that's going to do is that's going to give the user the ability to choose which group of test points they want when they perform that particular event. Um, so hopefully this will be a, a nice uh, tip or pointer for all of you folks that are that have scenarios where you have more than one template um, because you, you didn't really realize that you can maybe create one template and have all of your different test point types visible and then you can just use the user select command to have um, a user actually specify which measurement points they want to calibrate against on this particular test. And some other more specific scenarios like I did with the AC volt and the DC volt inspection events you could set it up actually where a specific set of events or a specific set of test points is defaulted in when you perform an event as well. Um, if you have any questions on this feature, um, please don't hesitate to give myself a call. Or you can always reach out to our support team. And we look forward to uh, hearing from you soon. And we hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you.